not watching the best of you. What's good, what's good? Who got on best for TV going? today? What's going, man? It's the thriller they call Killer, your boy Jay Killer, man. Wait, wait, wait. You said it's the thriller you call Killer? <laughs> nah, the thriller, man. The, the thriller. Th what, 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 what's that, all that mean, bro? Where all that energy come from early on, bro? I mean, you know, I'm an entertainer, you feel me? That's why I say I'm like the thriller, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like Michael Jackson, like, like thriller, like he, he was a real entertainer, okay, you know what okay. I'm saying? And my name's Jay Killer, so like the thriller they call Killer, you feel me? All right, let's break this down because you just said Michael Jackson, we just said the thriller. <laughs> Yeah. And you're an entertainer, right? So, yeah. Let I me mean, first ask you about Michael Jackson, right? Did, did Michael Jackson play an influence on you musically growing up, or? You could say that. Because I, I, I like, like, oh, like, I, I, I kind of got, like, an old soul. So, like, I be into, like, Michael Jackson, New Edition, like, all that type of, like, good music like that. Mm -hmm. You could definitely say it played an influence. Right, right, right. And you say you're you an entertainer, right? Yeah. I feel like most of the time rappers get caught up in the, I'm just a rapper, like, yeah. you feel me? What made you say, all right, I'm gonna be a rapper, right? But I'm gonna be an entertainer too. Like, I gotta feel, I gotta find a way to like, be different, stand out. Cause a lot of times I feel like that's what rappers get caught up in the like, yeah. like, you feel me? Man, see, it really is cause everybody raps. So like, everybody can go to the studio, make good music, and really like, just, just be a rapper. But everybody ain't an entertainer. Mm -hmm. Everybody ain't gonna, you know, go that extra mile and perform and, you know what I'm saying, really like be on Instagram, do entertaining stuff. Like, it's, everybody ain't gonna go like that extra mile. So it's like, I feel like you entertainer, like, it's like you ain't just a rapper, like, you like a whole package. You know All right. So let me ask you this question. So, was there somebody out there, like a rapper out there, that you seen performing or you seen, like, he was a rapper with a kiss and beat and he was not an entertainer? He was like, nah, I gotta be different from this. Did make some, somebody out there make you be like, nah, I can't just be a rapper? Or do you just come out that, out the top? Like, as you go I really, as I really been like that, but um, like I said, like really like old school type folks, cause that's really a lot of entertainers. So, like, really like, I like really like the R and B type folks. Like, they really be more on that on that vibe. Like, they really be like the rappers be on some more like I'm I'm rapper, rap. Just yeah, like you feel me? yeah, they be on some more like I'm just rap. But like the other genres, like the R and B and all that, like they be on it. So I feel like. You do music, it's like everybody be on, should be on that. You know what I mean? Or, so would you consider some of R&B like an R&B nigga? Or would you just say consider it hip hop? You feel me? I tap in that. I tap into that lane for sure. But I, I'm a rapper though. Mm -hmm. I ain't no R&B singer. But I, I tap in that lane for sure. Right. For sure. You dropped into the interview kind of quick. You feel me? Cause you try, you kind of threw me off with that shit from <laughs> the beginning. I, yeah. I, I, I ain't know what this pick was. Mad energy. You feel me? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, for yeah, sure. For so, sure. Let's get these niggas a little bit back on about you. Talk about life going up. You was born and raised in Atlanta. Yeah, I'm from the south side of Atlanta, so I'm from Riverdale, Georgia. That's Clayton County for y'all that might not know. Who else is from there? Cause you feel me? Um, it's a lot of like big folks that's from there, like Waka Flocka, um, Sierra from there. Mm -hmm. um, uh, a lot of big producers like uh, Southside. Mm -hmm. um, like a lot of it's a lot of big folks that came out of there for real, for real. Mm -hmm. And I ain't gonna lie, being again, I'm from New York, you feel me? And recently I just heard this record by Amaretta um, called Sorry Not Sorry, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was, man, I think she meant the, um, Clayton, that's where you're from, you said, right? Yeah, I'm from Clayton. You're from Clayton, right? Yeah. She said, that's not Atlanta, you feel me? But it's like outside looking at it, all this is Atlanta, bro. But like, what's your take on this, bro? Listen, I can't vouch for the whole Clayco, because the whole Clayco not Atlanta. But my part, I, I grew up off of Church Street, it's in Riverdale. Right off Highway 85, mm -hmm. and I also went to I went I grew up there, but I went to school in South Fulton from sixth grade to twelfth grade. So, like, yeah, I'm from Clayco, but I also went to South Fulton for like a good bit of my life. So, right. you can't really say I'm not from Atlanta, but I get what she's saying to a certain extent as far as Clayco. So mm -hmm. that's my take on it. Right, let me ask you this, bro, because again, I'm also looking out from New York for me. Yeah. Would you say like, all right, so like, let's say, cause I don't really know all the shit. I just know Atlanta's Atlanta. But mm -hmm. you say like Clayco, it's the same thing, like. Do y'all move the same way as somebody from Decatur move or something like that? Or is it like, could you tell the difference between everybody, like, from what part of land they from? Like, could you tell the difference? You could tell the difference. I mean, everybody, like, in the metro Atlanta area gonna have similarities, but it's like, it, it be a difference. Like, the west side, like, folks from the west side don't act the same way as folks from the south side, and the south side don't act the same way as folks from the east side. Right. So All right, so let me ask you this. All right, because I know sometimes, like, the north side niggas, the niggas getting money, the south side niggas, the ones robbing, the, the east side niggas, the ones fucking bitch. What's the south side niggas do, bro? What's the south side of For one, we the, we, the, we the best dress. Like, you got the best dress, you got the we, best dress. We got the, we got the swag for so, and then we get to the money, like, for, they say 85 south get the money, so. 85 Wait, that's 85 south, that's DC and Fly and them shit, right? That's the 85 South show, but uh, that's not like... They don't got nothing to do with the South Side, though. Nah, nah. Oh, what I was about to say, I, I didn't know uh, what's the was from the South... Where you thugging on from? He from Cleveland. Cleveland, that's the East Side? That's South Atlanta. South... 
So it's a difference. So you got South Atlanta, that's like the south, like the southern part of like the city of Atlanta. And then the south side is like the metro Atlanta area, like the south side of the metro Atlanta area, if that makes sense. Oh, uh, not really. <laughs> Somebody out there going to understand type shit. I'm going to have to look at it and think about it again because I don't really know you for real, for real. But yeah, you say you grew up in the south side of Atlanta, you, you went to school, different places and shit. Yeah. All right, let's talk about your upbringing, you feel me? What were you into? Like, how was life growing up for you and shit like that? Um... So, you know what I'm saying, like a little bit of good, a little bit of bad, you know what I'm saying? Um, I really was like, kind of, I was always focused as a kid. Like I always kind of like had big aspirations. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I had like older parents, so like they was kind of on me a lot. You know what I mean? So of course, you know, I might've gotten into little stuff here and there, but I was always like focused and I always had to like, I knew I was going to do something with my life. Right. So I always been in the music early too. Like I used to um, be a producer as well as I play instruments and mm. I just come from a music back background. So I knew I was going to do something like in the entertainment field in general. Mm. Like I always knew that. So you say you play instruments, right? Not oftentimes yeah. you hear like artists, well at least rappers on the rapper side playing instruments. You know everybody get to, I was in the streets and shit and I got the rapping and blah yeah. blah, you feel me? Yeah. Niggas don't be having no music background for real. Niggas be jumping into it like yeah. not knowing their history and shit. But yeah, I really come from that. Don't worry, talk about, like, talk about coming from music background and then playing an instrument. And what instrument did you play? I played on the saxophone, I played the trombone. And yeah, that's crazy. I played a trombone out in elementary school for like two weeks. I got kicked out. <laughs> I don't remember shit about that. Yeah. <laughs> but nah, I mean, it played a role just as far as like I gained like a love for the actual music itself. Right. So it just made me want to just chase my dreams even more. Like, and then over time, like it went from music, like actually making like the actual sounds of music mm. to actually like words and rapping and mm. all that just came from that. So, you know, would it you just say, happened. Would you say playing instruments played a part in like, Becoming the producer and some shit like once yeah, it it's on a certain did. sound. It definitely was like a trickle down effect. Like it was like that, then it turned to beats and then it turned to rap. Right, right. So when you was playing instruments, you were playing saxophone, and you see was playing a trombone right. What what are the, was a trombone, right? Yeah. Right, right, right. How'd you go from playing I right, I don't wanna be in the band no well, I wouldn't even say you wanna be in the band because no I don't know. But alright, let me try making beats, you feel me? Try making my own sound. Um It really just was like I just like music so much, I was like I'ma just Try some. So I just tried making beats, and then I mess around. Just tried rapping, and it just happened. Well, so, it just, so was it was it like what you said was a quick transition, or was it like that take time? Like I stood I stood out as a producer for a minute. I didn't like how I was going. Then I became a rapper, or like or niggas was rapping my beat fire or some shit. Um, I mean the beat part kind of like was quick. I guess you could say the rapping is what took the time because that's what I liked the most. Right. So it's like as soon as I start rapping and I got serious about it. That's all I've been doing the past like four or five years. Just I've been locked in on it. Do you still be producing and making your own beats or? Do you nah, just... I'm gonna be real. I got away from that. But <laughs> it's something I want to get back to eventually. Word. Though. Word, word. Did you ever produce any hit songs out there, like in, in your short period? Oh, nah, nah, I went. I went on that level. He was on that level. I'm not even saying hits, but like like fire songs to your neighborhood or people that was everybody bumping this shit. I mean, people like I knew personally, but that's really all them. Or, 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 I ain't really get out there like like and start buzzing till like I started rapping. Or, at what age did you say start taking rapping serious? Uh, like 16, 17. 16, 17. How old are you right now, bro? 22. 22. So that was a couple years ago, you feel me? For so sure. at 16, you were still in high school, you started taking rapping serious, right? For sure. You just played the instrument, everybody look at, oh, he's the producer. Everybody probably look at you as the producer. Did people start taking you serious as a rapper yet? Or they were like, nah, they were trying to put you in a certain, certain category? Um. Uh, at first, I, I think everybody was trying to figure out like, like where I was gonna take it. Mm -hmm. And then, but when I, the more I stayed on it, the more serious people took me. Mm -hmm. And then the more I started working my ones and twos, and I got out here and made a name for myself, the more people started believing in me. So that's just how that went. All right. So when you said people start believing, you did take them a time. Like your first song, people were like, oh, this shit fire was like. Nah. It was See, I ain't got, I ain't, it wasn't like that. It wasn't like the first song just, just pop. But over time, like the 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 more I put in, the more I got out. You mm -hmm. feel me? So when you when the what 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 song did you say everybody got behind you in school or some shit? Oh, what did it happen in school? In school, it was a song. We, me and my brother LeBron, we had a song called Risk. Um, that was like the song that kind of like made everybody be like, all right, we're gonna take them serious. Um, so that was like the first song, I guess you could say. And then I personally had a song called Act Right that made people like, okay, like we locked in on him for sure. Mm -hmm. I ain't gonna lie, bro. You just said Lil Brent. I feel like I've been lied to, bro. Cause I thought you niggas was blood brothers, bro. <laughs> yeah, that's what everybody think. Everybody say we look alike, but I don't really see it. But you know, that's or, my brother though. For or, sure. How'd y'all come? How'd y'all come together? Uh, I met him in sixth grade. We met in middle school. Right. But then we ain't get locked in like on some like every day, and then we doing music and all that to like high school. Mm -hmm. 
we had ended up start working at the same job together. We was working at a Chick Fil A, so we were just around each other a lot. And it's some crazy stuff just started happening. Like I, we just started hanging out. Then I messed around. I had I had got in a bad accident. Like I did like a 360 on the highway, and then it was some more stuff that happened. Like with him, like the legal stuff. So. You know what I'm saying? It was just, I don't know, we just had linked up. Yeah, and just bound it together at the right yeah, moment. But it, I feel like when we had started going through stuff and we, like, stuck together through it, it was kind of like it just... It, we it just, made y'all culture type shit. Yeah, yeah, it was just been like that since. Right, right. And then together y'all formed a crew called, well, an uh, entertainment crew called FBE, right? So. Uh, are y'all the only two artists on the label? Yes. Or, or talk about how y'all came up. Because he told me his what, what F, F, FBE meant to him. What does FBE mean to you? So it's called finesse for a blessing. Yeah. You know what I mean? That says a lot in itself. Like, right. I feel like everybody got a greater goal and a greater purpose in life that they want to achieve. So, you know, sometimes in order to achieve that goal, you're going to have to take some risks. You're going to do some stuff you don't want to do. Oh, y'all scripted that, bro, because he said the exact same thing. But y'all got the script it out? It's, or it's, in, it's in you. <laughs> like, when you, like, when you do what we do, it's in you. Like, it ain't, it ain't nothing scripted. Like, that's why I say, like, you, it's, it's certain obstacles you got to overcome to reach a certain goal. So mm-hmm. that way... That would it mean to me, like you just it just it's just perseverance, man. You just achieving a certain goal, doing what you gotta do to get there. Ah, uh, you say you got risk certain shit. What's some of the shit you risk for this music shit, bro? Like what's some of the shit you had to go through? Like people always see, they always see the good on there. Like they yeah. see the billboards and see from but they don't yeah. see like the like the hard work you gotta put in. Talk yeah. about some of the shit, bro. Um, well you risk, you know, a lot of things that you take for granted, like sleep and having time to chill and all that, you risk that, like that go out the window, you gotta put the time in. Right. As well as you risk your safety, like you, you, you put yourself in a lot of harm's way when you when you trying to do this rap thing. Mm-hmm. The rap scene itself has been like saturated with a lot of uh I guess you would call it like street activity. Mm-hmm. Let's just put it like that. It's like more of an image type shit, yeah. Yeah, so it's kinda like it'd be a lot of it would be a lot of like like little bullshit you gotta deal with when you trying to rap. Um so you risk your safety as well as you just risk, you know what I'm saying, like your privacy, like you gotta be out there, you gotta be you gotta be on the scene, you gotta be in the mix, you gotta know this person, that person. Rap politics, you gotta shake hands with people, you risk all that type of shit. So mm-hmm. it's a lot to come with this shit. You just mentioned like street politics plays a part in like like of a way of growing your career type shit. So but you decide to take a different route. Like I'm gonna say like I don't know about your street background, but I would say you was like another method to gain like pop, pop popularity in the city type shit. Yeah. You use the skits and shit, use the acting, use the TikTok videos, right? Yeah, what yeah. made you go with that rock? Cause some, I ain't gonna lie, bro. I was one of them first. I was one of them niggas that when TikTok first came out, like I'm not getting on TikTok. That shit corny type shit. I'm not doing no damn. Yeah. And after while I'm, I'm watching TikTok, I'm consistent on this shit. Yeah. Now it's the point. I might be doing TikTok videos for me because yeah. that shit like that shit kind of fire. But like, how'd you go about like breaking bridges? It seems like you've been doing this for a minute. See. It just depends, like, like as far as TikTok go, that came, cause like, I had a song basically called What You Want. Mm-hmm. That's like when I really got on the TikTok. That was like, it was in the middle of pandemic. TikTok had just started like taking off or whatever. It's like 2020. So in the song, I had shot a video. I had some celebrity guests on um, Famous Ocean and Kung Fu. Mm-hmm. They like big influences as well. Like, they be on that TikTok way very mm-hmm. heavy. Along the way, I got cool with them. I got cool with this other influencer called, uh, his name was Jakari. And a bunch of other flu- influences like I had met like while my song was buzzing. Mm-hmm. So like the more I had like just been around them, and it's more as like I got exposed to like that world. Mm-hmm. I saw like just that way to yeah, like I saw things. like like I would be dumb to not tap into that. Right. So it's kind of like that really kind of got me like on that that right. wave like kind of more heavy. You know what I'm saying? Right. Cause I see your Instagram bio says active. Was you already thinking about becoming an actor before TikTok, or did TikTok like find another method for you like? I wanted to be an actor since like a kid. A kid. So, like, yeah, TikTok just came along the way, but I, I wanted, I've been wanting to act. Right. I still want to act. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you say you got short movies coming out. Like, what type of acting you want to be? Like, do you want to be a funny dude? Do you want to be a, a rap? A one that's come up with rapping? Like, what type of acting you want to be? Uh, that's a good question. I feel like. What would you say? What, what like, uh, this, like this is like what you call it, your pitch. You feel me? This is your yeah. pitch. You feel me? Why should they put you in? Movie? What role should you get? Man, I feel like you gotta put me in like a real life type movie. Like, like the, it gotta have a message. Like the movie gotta be be some form of like, like we going on a journey and we going on some type of adventure. I feel like I'd be good for that just cause like it's like I wouldn't be acting really. I really would just be how I am in real life. So mm-hmm. it's kind of like you wouldn't have to really train me. I wouldn't have to. 
I wouldn't have to practice. I wouldn't just, like I would just know what to do like, right. if I was putting a movie like that. Right. And I seen like you. I ain't gonna lie. When I see your TikToks and when I looked at, it, I took a quick look at it. It was like you're also a comedian. See, for me, yeah. could you so you, could you see yourself becoming a comedian too or? Nah, I would never be no comedian. Yeah, I just, be no comedian. It just go ahead to be an entertainer, like I was saying. Like, you just gotta know how to just do that. Right, right. All right, let me ask this question, because this is a little bit off topic, right? Yeah. Ty, he wanted to go to Milani for me right now, right? And he decided to take comedian. I, I, have you been paying attention to that, or do you? what's your take on that? You said who? T.I. T.I.? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I yeah, see bro, I seen it. Said, bro, what's your yeah. take on that, bro? I mean, you know. Do you feel like niggas like like should stick in their lane sometimes? <laughs> do you feel like it's cool to try different shit out sometimes? I feel like shit, like you do it make you happy, but me personally, I'm just speaking for myself. Like I would never just go on some like I'm finna go do stand up or go make people laugh. Like I make people laugh, it's just, just happy. Right. So you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. But teachers, I don't know you feel me. <laughs> That's the fact. That's the fact. For so sure. I ain't gonna lie, we went through your catalog real quick, right? Yeah. And you never dropped a project, but you've been rapping since you were 16. I want to say that's like five, six, seven. What's yeah. going on, bro? Why, why don't we got a project from you, bro? Oh, um, it's a couple of reasons, like. See, I've been, I've been, I take each single pretty seriously. So like, although it's been a long time gaps in between, it's like each single gets like a whole campaign type shit. So it'd be like a whole movement behind each single. So I've been trying to build upon each single so that when I do drop a tape, it just makes a certain amount of sense. But um, I'm definitely working on that right now. Like my project, you know what I'm saying, long overdue. And as well as I understand, like I got to put out more music for the people. So I'm working on that now. You know what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's on the way. You feel me? So make a promise to us, bro. We're gonna keep this project, bro. And we're gonna we're gonna hold you to your word. Uh, you said when when yeah. it gonna be? Yeah, because it's, it's gonna been be too long, bro. We got a project, bro. I promise it's gonna be 2022. 2022, right? For sure. So I ain't gonna lie. If you come back here January 1st, 2022, uh, project, bro, you gotta you gotta come on. You gotta do, you gotta nah, do 100 push ups, something, I bro. I don't, I don't like the last, so you feel me? It's See, gonna be so all right, let's do a deal right now. If you don't got a project out by January 1st, 2023, you gotta do 100 push ups. 100 push ups. 100 push ups. Oh, yeah, I got you. That's bad. It's up. Alright, we're gonna hold y'all to your word. Don't be ducking calls and shit. <laughs> <really. So, laughs> I got you. So, you say you've been getting a single, right? And you have one of the single called What You Want or some shit. Yeah. No, right. That was the one I was talking about. Like, I had the, I had the celebrity guest and all that. Right, right, right. That's like my biggest song to this day. Right. And everybody's fuck with this shit. You feel me? And again, yeah, to yeah. us, you feel me? Like, us, because I'm from New York again. It like you go to Atlanta, you got a buzzing song. Everybody get behind that song. Everybody get to push in that song. How was yeah. it for you, bro? Cause you feel me. That's how I look on the outside looking it. But for up and coming artists, Atlanta might be different. Like it yeah. look easy as fuck. But to you, like it's like it didn't get to as high as you wanted to. Yeah, I wouldn't call it easy. It definitely was a lot of uh, like I said, it's a campaign. It was a lot of time and effort that was put into getting it out there. Cause I don't got no manager, and we are the label, so mm-hmm. I do everything myself. Um, but that was like my biggest song to date. Like I said, I had a, I had a lot of people on board that was supporting that song. A lot of big folks. So um, I don't know who was behind the song. Uh, so like I said, Famous Ocean, mm-hmm. Kung Fu. They was in the video. Um, they was supporting the song. I had a lot of influences in general. Like that, had did like things to the song. Um, shout out Quay Grand down in Miami. She did something to the song. Um, like I said, Jakai, He out in Atlanta. He did something to the song. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a long list of other ones. You I don't want to forget lot, nobody. You see a lot of rock with the song too. Yeah, yeah, a lot of. She, I, I mess with her. That's my dog. Like she, she shouted out the song. Shout out her and her whole team, Vine, Brandon, all y'all folks. And really, just, that was like my like kind of like that kind of got me in my, my foot in the door a little bit with the uh, with the industry. Like that song, it, it did almost 100k on, on YouTube. Uh, like over 100k in streams, like all that, so right. it went up. So let me ask you this question: You got the buzzing song for me? They're doing 100k. This all authentic. Everybody rock on it, right? Yes, and this shit pushing, it's pushing you from, but it's yes, just to slow down, eventually type shit. Like, yes, what, do you be feeling like yo? I could do something more to push that song because this could be a hit. If this doing, if this shit doing this shit all authentic for me, yeah. did, did that come to your mind? That those other thoughts come to your mind? Everybody rocking with it. Um, I mean, yeah, you can always think little stuff like that, but I try to look at it like everything happened for a reason. Mm-hmm. That was like, you feel me? As much as I would have wanted that to just phew, go through the, you know what I'm saying? That might be the alley oop for what I got next, you feel right. me? And it, everything happened with the time, right? You feel me? Right. Now, and I asked little Brandon this, because again, outside looking at it, it seemed like when you from Atlanta, everybody get behind you, everybody just support each other, yeah. everybody know each other. Yeah. Do, you feel like, do you feel you get that same love, or is it different? Or like, how does it feel to you? It really depends on who you are in Atlanta. Like, that's really the best way to put it. If you somebody that's, people embrace, mm-hmm. you get a lot of love. If you somebody that's not as known, I guess you could say, mm-hmm. in Atlanta, it ain't gonna be like that. Like, it ain't like, like, Atlanta ain't like, everybody just finna rock behind somebody they don't know. Mm-hmm. But if it's somebody that they been around, that they been new, 
that they know through so and so, whatever the case may be, it ain't nothing for them to embrace you. Yeah, right. and, and 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 everybody gonna be behind you. That's why I say it really just depends on who you are and what you what you like, what you into. I ain't gonna lie, cause too many times you feel me. We hear oh, Atlanta's a place like, especially from coming from New York or going yeah. to my or like when I hear shit, they be like, well, I go to Atlanta network, cause they feel, everybody feel like you go to Atlanta and you don't got like see you a nobody in your city, right? But you go to Atlanta and you start networking, you could become a somebody just that quick by rent. How it is that shit? It ain't, it ain't that easy, bro. It's, <laughs> cause it's a thousand people that's already from here that been putting in work, that's been grew up around here that know so and so that's been tapped in and been around him and been around him that's already a thousand steps ahead of them people that's gonna be just coming out here doing that. That's why I say it ain't it ain't just easy like you just come out here and it just it just happen. Mm -hmm. It's 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 kinda like a lot of factors that go into it. And like I said, there's a lot of politics that go into it. So you kinda gotta keep that in mind if you is coming out here to, you know, do music. Yeah, right, right, right. I ain't gonna lie, bro. We know about the Migos, we know about the little babies, you feel me? I feel like every three, four, five years ago there's a like a bunch of New way rappers from it, from the A that blow up sure. or something like that, right? Sure. So I ain't gonna lie, I put you in there, I put Lil Brand in there, you feel me? Put sure. me on some other artists in the A that you feel like gonna be that next wave of Atlanta artists to go mainstream, you feel me? I wanna be able to tap in with them too. It's a lot of, um, like on the, on the, on the, on the young, on the young. Uh, I mean, your age back, I feel yeah. like the next on wave, right? You feel, cause everybody, cause we always look at Atlanta, they got the next hottest artists, yeah. they got the next top, cause y'all, y'all the wave right yeah. now, you feel me? On the young vibe, it's, um, F in the dealer, he popping. Mm. Um, Slime Life, Shotty, he popping. Um, La Man Man, um, them folks. Huncho, he blowing up right now. Um, quite like you said, Brand, mm. me, uh, La Moon, once in La Moon. You got Lil Cheeto, both of them from the south side. I got a cousin, you know what I'm saying? His name Wildlife 100, he doing his thing too. He out here in Atlanta. And it's really just. Is it, the list go on? It's, it's it's a little wave for sure. Wait, wait, wait. See, I feel like that's the next wave for Atlanta artists to blow up type shit. I'm good. It so, is. what do you think you missing? What do you gotta do for you to like to take off now, bro? You feel me? Because you you say you got a song that had hundred k that had a whole sea rocket yeah. hype. And I see, I know you got a hit coming because you fired, bro. You feel me? I was listening Appreciate to a lot of music. Appreciate what do you feel like you gonna do this time different? With your, a new approach? If you got another song like that, um, or or even push that song even a little yeah, bit more. Yeah, for sure. Um. I feel like, bro, at the end of the day, like, it's all about consistency, for one. It's all about consistency, and it's all about, um, you know, just me staying on top of what I know I, I got to do, you feel me? So it's like, as long as I consistently do what I know I'm supposed to do, it's only a matter of time for me. I'm like, one foot in, one foot out. So I get both feet in, it's over with, you feel me? So it's all to be for me. All right, so we know we talked a lot musically about you. What, what's some shit you don't be doing? What's some shit you be doing when you're not doing music, bro? Like, get them a little bit, like, more. I know you do skits, like, besides yeah. entertainment, bro, because we know you're entertaining, yeah, bro. Besides entertainment. Yeah, entertainment, bro. Oh, uh, besides entertainment, uh, I got a clothing brand that takes a lot of my time. Uh, it's finesse. called Finesse Way Clothing. Finesse Way Clothing. Yeah, we got a whole clothing brand, and it's, it's its own entity, for real. Right. So that take a lot of my time. Um, and if I ain't doing that or the music, you know, I, I'm really just, I'm really just trying to get some money, bro. I ain't gonna right. no cap. All right, that's what's up. That's what's up, though, bro. I appreciate you for this interview, first of all, too, bro. I, my I ain't gonna lie, we caught, we did this shit kind of last minute, bro. Yeah, so quick, you feel me? So yeah, we facts. wanted to go back soon just to get some yeah. money, that type shit. But hey, shout you good, out, you good in Atlanta, man? You yeah. can out anytime, bro. Shout out Best Point of View TV for doing this interview with you, bro. Shout out Best Point of View TV. It's your boy J Killer. Follow me on the ground at J A Y Y K I L L A H, man. Stay down out right now. It's the single. I'm going up, man, all the way. All right, we out. For sure. Check it, check it. Trials and tribulations. I'm just trying to live my life, hoping to make the right decisions. Because I want to live it right. I remember nights, no sleep, feeling weaker than seven days. Now I'm using my clever ways to make sure my song's getting played. But these niggas doubt me. They think I'm not going to make it. But soon I'm going to be rich and happy. And you're getting naked. I promise you I'm the best. Supreme Knox, she am on the rise. Smoking dope when I'm getting high. Spirit, she floating to the sky. I wonder, is they go think I'm a joke because...